Welcome to this simple, basic and not much relevant introduction to Joshi Pro Wrestling. Despite being usually associated with the United States of America, professional wrestling is a very popular discipline in Japan, to the point that it could be now considered part of the country's culture. Wrestling combines athleticism and entertainment, creating an original and exciting show. While many types of match exist, each one with unique stipulations, rules in a wrestling match are quite simple. Most commonly, in a match the winner is decided by pinfall, that is a count of three while keeping opponent's shoulder at the mat, submission, knockout or countout. Of course there are different rules to follow, otherwise disqualifications will occur. For example, it is forbidden to hit the opponents with punches. Uh, okay, that, that's good for arm or open hand. And of course you can pull the opponent by, by the the air? Uh, well... Also prohibited is hitting the opponents when they're touching the ropes or preventing them from breathing... Oh, damn it! I I'm trying to explain the rules, it's not possible to work in these conditions! Truth is that very, very often rules are not really followed and that's because pro wrestling is a world full of over-the-top characters who can be fan favorites but also real mercenaries who would do anything in order to win. In Japan, by tradition, fighting spirit prevails over theatrics. For this reason, strong style, a much more intense approach than normal, is the pro wrestling style most associated with Japan. But we are now talking about Joshi Pro Wrestling that is similar but not exactly the same. For Joshi Pro Wrestling, to be fair, we don't mean a particular style. Joshi literally means little girls, so it simply means women's pro wrestling in Japanese. There are, however, some differences that make Joshi pro wrestling a unique experience. In Japan there are many all-woman companies that really have little to envy to their all-men counterparts. Between the 80s and 90s, thanks to all Japan women's pro wrestling, Joshi's popularity was at its peak with athletes famous on international level and big shows with thousands of spectators. By the end of the 90s, however, the whole movement started to decline and with the new millennium, AJW went out of business and public interest on the women's wrestling faded as well. In the last decade, however, we have witnessed the reborn of women's wrestling in Japan, with many companies that were able to grow in popularity and new talented athletes who brought a breath of fresh air to the discipline. Among the main features of Joshi Pro Wrestling there is surely the speed. At high levels, Japanese wrestlers can exchange hits and devastating moves at very intense rhythm. Timing at such speed is really important as it takes only a small mistake to find yourself injured for several months without a chance to work, and to be paid of course. The most impressive thing is that, on average, despite there being both excellent and mediocre athletes, the technical level of Japanese wrestlers is quite good, generally granting a good quality for most shows. The exchange we are now looking between Ice Ribbon's Tsukushi and actress Miku Ono is just the starting phase between the two contenders, and despite that, it is executed at high speed, almost automatically. Following Japanese tradition, the main goal of inexperienced rookies is to show the veterans and the audience their fighting spirit, in order to gain the respect of the old guard and fans alike. The most important thing, which is something very Japanese in my opinion, is not success or failure, but to give 100%, do the best to improve. It is important to get up again after every fall. This attitude in wrestling often leads to success. Even among more experienced athletes, this mechanism is often triggered, with strength tests, heat exchanges and clashes of will that go on until one of the contenders has to give up. Gaining the upper hand, however, is not necessarily equal to gaining victory. The beauty of wrestling, actually, is given by its unpredictability. Advantage is often short-lived and it takes an instant to reverse the situation. It's an established tradition for athletes to show respect with an handshake. But once the match starts, it is no holds barred and inexperience often leads to pain. Or to a kick in the face. There are high impact moves like the superplex. Or even risky dives outside the ring. Every wrestler has an arsenal of personal techniques that enhance their specific qualities. 
There are those who rely on speed, on physical strength, on tricks and strategy. There is something for every taste. Another primary feature are signature moves that are specific techniques used basically in every match. And of course the finishers, match winning moves that, if correctly performed, leave no way out to the opponent. Tag team matches are very popular in Japan and this leads to various combined moves. Here we see some different types of kick combos, but there are many, many more. Title matches, where champions defend their belts from challengers' assaults, are very exciting and usually the main attraction of the shows. A unique feature of Joshi Pro Wrestling is surely the amount of variety when it comes to costumes and ring gear that are flashy and elaborated and makes every wrestler distinctive and special to the fans' eyes. Other features, usually not seen in the Western wrestling, are paper streamers thrown by fans. Despite not being exclusive to women's wrestling, they're far more popular in Joshi. Usually bought privately by fans, they're thrown before the start of the match, creating a special effect and allowing the audience to contribute to the show's atmosphere. With these basic notions about Joshi now left behind, I'd like to introduce two groups I'm particularly fond of. The first is Ice Ribbon. Founded in 2006, Ice Ribbon showed immediately a unique approach to the discipline, training and debuting very young girls, in some cases even underage. First shows were held in a little room without a ring called Icebox. It is still active today under a different name and for a different company. Since 2009, Ice Ribbon has moved to their own dojo located in Warabi, Saitama, where both training sessions and the company's weekly shows take place. One of the most famous Japanese wrestlers, Hikaru Shida, now living in the United States and wrestling for AEW, took the first steps in Ice Ribbon, becoming one of the Rakons between 2008 and 2014. Having forged many top quality athletes, Ice Ribbon managed with time to expand their range of action to other cities like Osaka, Nagoya and Sendai, as well as performing regularly in the temple of Japanese pro wrestling, Tokyo's Kraken Hall, and also in the prestigious Yokohama Cultural Gymnasium, Buntai for Friends, a legendary venue that closed last September. One of the main features of Ice Ribbon is, for sure, its interaction with fans. They are asked quite often to share their opinions with surveys, and handshakes with the audience after the show are almost a ritual. Another pillar of the company is that everyone can join their training. With no limits about age or nationality, any girl can join the Pro Wrestling Circle Ice Ribbon's training program and find a safe and supportive environment. This is one of the major merits of the company. For example, this is Yappi, a Filipino girl with a great artistic talent, she's an illustrator, who debuted in 2019 at age 39. While knowing that her career can be very long, she nevertheless decided to get inside the wrestling ring, winning the favor of the fans in the process. Ice Ribbon is maybe the only company where such a thing is possible. In a business that is often cynical, it really is a nice story. Ice Ribbon's key feature is summarized in his motto, be happy with pro wrestling. The certainly well hidden meaning is that pro wrestling should make the spectator happy, and this is a specialty of Ice Ribbon. The company is in fact known for adding bits of comedy in its matches with uh, special rules, sometimes really hilarious, and a good dose of nonsense. The girls themselves show great creativity in finding new ways to entertain the fans, and sometimes even happens that, whenever there is a birthday of one of the wrestlers, cosplay matches take place in the dojo. In these matches, participants wear the costume of the birthday person and imitate her mannerism. They also must imitate their techniques, because usually it is the only way to win the match. The girls themselves seem to enjoy really much this impersonation thing, to the amusement of everyone involved. Even hardcore matches, usually violent, without rules, and where any objects such as chairs and ladders can be used, gain their dose of comedy in Ice Ribbon, leading to hilarious results. For example, if a pair of salad tongues can become a terrible weapon, that apparently doesn't seem to be really effective. Who would have guessed? Here instead, a very creative usage of a baseball bat can be noticed. Among Ice Ribbon's most common hardcore objects, my favorite is the plastic brick. You know which one. When the ring is full of these bricks, two things are certain. Lower and pain for those who land on them. 
Ironically, usually those who threw bricks are the first one to land on them, what you call karma, I guess. You won't look at the bricks with the same eyes again. Despite this philosophy seems in conflict with the stoic idea of Japanese Bushido applied to wrestling, such conflict is, in reality, only superficial. These girls perform in high-intensity matches, often for many days a week, and sometimes more than once in the same day, trying at the same time to put a smile on audience face. That's not a trivial matter for sure. Ice Ribbon can count on around 20 active athletes right now, all of them very different in personality and age. Tsukushi, for example, is a 10-year career veteran, but she's just 23. She's a really talented athlete, very fast, and despite her compact size, with impressive physical strength. She's also quite a brat, and often drives the referees crazy due to her tricks. Among her signature moves there is the fearsome diving foot stomp from the green corner. Tsukasa Fujimoto, 37, can be considered the top wrestler of Ice Ribbon, and she only gets better with time. Don't be fooled by her girl next door smile, Tsuka is a tenacious fighter who's made kicks her own specialty. But that's not all, her speed is really impressive and she performs every move with flawless timing. His qualities, along with experience, allowed her to win in 2018 the Best Woman Wrestler Award in Japan. Tsuka is also the official heiress of Japanese Ocean Cyclone Suplex, the finisher of Manami Toyota, a legend and pioneer of modern Joshi Pro Wrestling. And Ice Ribbon possibilities are limitless, so, for example, right now Hamaka Hoshi can face her daughter Ibuki since both are Ice Ribbon wrestlers. Here they are teaming up in a match. Ibuki is just 17 years old. This is Suzu Suzuki, who debuted in December 2018 with an upset victory in her very first official match. If you remember what was said about rookies in Japan, you'd understand how exceptional this is. Young Suzu is naturally flexible and athletic, and her career looks like a path of a chosen one. Seems that the company really bets on her a lot, enough for viewers to look at Suzu as a prodigy kid. This idea was further confirmed when in August, at just 17 years old, she won Ice Ribbon's most important title in the main event of a very big show at the Yokohama Boomtown. Obviously, this led Suzu to be featured on the most famous wrestling magazine of the country, a rare and prestigious sequence of events and another evidence of how Ice Ribbon is quite a one-of-a-kind company. Among those currently active, Ice Ribbon is one of the most interesting companies and, despite the recent pandemic hitting the wrestling world really hard, they face the situation firmly, introducing effective safety measures for both athletes and, naturally, fans. Considering the great care this company has for its athletes, its environment and its history, Ice Ribbon is the ideal platform for any woman who wants to start a career in wrestling, but it is, of course, also an ideal form of entertainment, both for long-time fans and for those who get into pro wrestling for the first time. Let's now talk about the second group that is named Actress Girls, while we look at a short video taken from their last Korakuen Hall show. Actress Girls started its activity in 2015 with the concept of actress fighting on a ring. Literally, actresses doing wrestling. At the launch, there was some criticism about this concept, such as it is lighthearted wrestling and it's not taking wrestling seriously, because the group was shaped as a wrestling company, but its members were all actresses. However, since the original members began to participate in stardom events, the perspective on the group gradually changed. Since there was awareness among the members that they were amateur wrestlers, they had this strong feeling like having to work harder than everyone else and go on the ring with enthusiasm and determination. With this mindset, the performance quality increased day, day by day. Since 2016, Yumiko Hota, a legendary wrestler who often participated in actress shows, joined the group as an advisor and from that point the wrestling quality has become stronger. The number of shows gradually increased from once per month, as well as the chance to participate more often in other companies' shows. As of now, more members regularly join other companies' events, and this is, as a matter of fact, a recognition of Actress Girls as a true member of the professional wrestling industry. Since the beginning, the belonging members aim to be recognized more with the term Actress Girls instead of Wrestlers, falling under a more unique category. Also, from the start, all members have taken part in dance performances in every show's opening. Unlike previous companies that had pro wrestlers singing and dancing on a ring, Actress provided the unique feature of actresses dancing on a ring. While sounding like a very thin difference, it is perceived as a key feature that set the group apart from others. 
by some degree, it can be said that the ring is a stage. Many members of the group had little or no experience in wrestling before joining Atras. For example, Tai Honma, original member since 2015, had no idea about wrestling ahead of her debut, and now is among the most technical athletes in the group, making even her debut in Mexico, where pro wrestling, known as Lucha Libre, is almost a national sport. Current actress champion Yuki Takase also had a little interest in wrestling, preferring theater to it, and now, thanks to her explosive style, is one of the most charismatic members of the group. One of the key features of the group is the depth of the roster that led to the creation of two brands, Beginning and Colors, in 2019. Each brand holds its own shows, despite some, let's say, loans of an happening. Beginning kept the name of the first actress shows and is formed by the original members of the group, and usually the most experienced ones. Colors, led by Saki, is formed by younger girls and gives more space to experimentation. Thanks to the steady flow of new recruits, since 2018 13 girls debuted for actress, experience levels and brand compositions are always changing. There are also some rivalries between the two brands, resulting in beginning versus color matches in the joint shows called ACT. Let's now have a look at the remaining main features which make actress girls different from everyone else. One of the most distinctive features is the previously mentioned dance performance, a group choreography made by the members themselves at the start of the show and usually different for each event. While opening lives by wrestlers are not a rarity in Joshi, as previously mentioned, here the ones who are dancing in the ring are actresses rather than wrestlers. Since the split into the two brands of beginning and colors, also the variety of the opening performance increased, since each brand has its own show. Therefore, the styles of the dance performances are rather different as well. This adds some more cell to the rivalry between the brands, that sometimes compete to get the right of a more prominent role in the opening of the bigger shows like Karakuen's. If I had to give an opinion, Color's performance has a more playful style while Beginning, directed by ring announcer Mizuka Arai, has a more elaborate choreography often combined with themed costumes. These are two different approaches, but combined together in an interesting way. Another feature, marginal but interesting, of actress is the pre-match presentation, which is looked after with care by the members. Almost each girl has some special routine that stresses her character or special skill through a short exhibition, like Yoshiko Hasegawa here with the nunchaku, or dance. Of course, there are also combined entrances for established team, like in the case of Hikari Shimizu and Mari, who can be seen here performing in a more traditional Japanese outfit and combining dance and the nodachi sword. The effect is quite evocative. But we can also have a more modern version, like with Tai and Nao, who enter the ring with megaphones and a lot of energy. Being primarily a group of actresses, there is a wide variety of characters and each girl takes advantage of her own unique traits. For example, we have Mie, who looks like the typical Japanese idol, kawaii and harmless, but in the ring she becomes a real pest hitting opponents with a teddy bear. Maybe it doesn't harm the body an awful lot, but certainly affects morale. Her rival, Momotani, seems to be her polar opposite. Her entrance in the ring incarnates traditional elegance and composure of Kyoto, her hometown. Now Kakuta, nicknamed Bloody Cat and who recently became a freelancer, prefers strategy and tricks to get the upper hand on opponents and, while often caught by the referee, she doesn't mind adding insult to injury. All happy, at least, mostly. She certainly is. Mari, second in command of Colors Brand, joined the group in 2018. She's very athletic and physically strong. Her secret? She is a ninja. Many wrestlers play the ninja character, but Mari is the first ninja who became a wrestler. Doesn't look like a big difference, but it really is, because this makes her unique. Her experience in stage combat also allows her to be more versatile, in addition to her talent as an artist and actress. Young Ayumi Hayashi seems to have just returned from a Japanese summer festival and is a favorite of fans, who are entranced by her energy and positivity. Saki is Color's leader and a ring veteran with a wild and raw fighting style. She sometimes tries to recruit the rivals of the beginning brand, causing confusion and at times jealousy in her own group. 
Miyuki Takaze represents the indomitable fighting spirit and therefore is nicknamed Osaka's Phoenix from her birthplace. With natural athleticism and great charisma, is very appreciated by fans. Of course there's no lack of comedy characters who take advantage from their acting background to steal a smile from the fans, because in the end, a good laugh is healthy. Actress is a versatile group and recruiting new members almost entirely from the entertainment business make it more unique. Finding on the ring as an actress, that's the essence of Actress Girls. Ice Ribbon and Actress announced a joint event for November 2020 where they fight each other on the ring and for popularity among the fans. Both have also exported their talents to Italy for the show Rising Slam in November 2019. Unfortunately, the current global situation makes a second event virtually impossible in the present and near future. I made this video hoping to share a less known but special and unique aspect of Japan, showing what I believe is most positive about it. Hopefully it won't take long before Japanese talents will be able to travel abroad again. Meanwhile, please check and follow both groups on their websites and SNS accounts. I want to thank once more both Ice Ribbon and Actress Girls for allowing me to use their footage and talk about them on this video, as well as all of you for listening to it until the end. Thank you very much.